Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cromper here. I've got what I think might be a pretty severe Platonist right here. His name is Sam Harris, and the video is called Sam Harris on the Delusion of Free Will. It's been posted by Zahadi Alam, and uh, it's a cut together of different statements on free will. And so we're just going to talk to Sam here about what he has to say about free will. We're going to we're going to have a dialogue. Do you remember when the left used to be into dialogues? Boy, they don't like dialogues anymore, do they? No, sir, we don't want to talk to those people. We've got to restrict their freedom of speech and stop them from speaking. No more dialogues. All right, well, we're going to have a dialogue with Sam. Okay, Sam has some things to say about free will. Now, I want to put in your brain the fact that we do not have any evidence for anything besides reality. Okay? So when, when somebody postulates something outside of reality, we need to put the brakes on and say, hold up, soldier, give me a little evidence there. So we've got to stick to reality, okay? Now whenever somebody makes up La La Land, we just got to let them go and just say, no, no, I'm not going with you. you got to get evidence before I'm going to go down that road, okay? Always stick to reality. Always trust your senses and yourself. Don't take somebody else saying that you and your mind uh, aren't good enough to think for yourself, okay? So you're an individual, you can think for yourself. Now, now that you're an individual who can think for yourself, I want you to watch some Sam Harris material, okay? To proceed differently than you did. If you, if you Oops, chose A, a you could further. have chosen B in the past. If, if you could rewind the movie of your life to some moment, ten I minutes ago. I apologize, I've got to back up even further the way we view the world. Now, the, the, the this is where I want to start, so try to focus now. I apologize. Well, our conception of free will rests on two assumptions. It, the first assumption is that each of us was free to behave differently than we did in the past. It, okay. Were you free to do differently than you did? You got in the car and went and bought a Twix, but you could have done some push-ups, right? And you knew you knew you should have done the push-ups instead of going and buying the Twix. But there you were buying the Twix. So were you free to behave differently in the past? Or the time you wanted for the life of you to whip your kid, but you didn't? Or the time you whipped your kid and then you felt bad because you thought I could have handled that different? There's no reason to resort to violence. Right? You know you've behaved differently in the past than you could have. You know that you, were, you did things that you... Um, should have done and it was an act of will or you shouldn't have done and you should have been a, a better person or whatever you know a million things in your life so you know that's true assumption number one that's true you could have acted differently in the past you could rewind the movie of your life to some moment ten minutes ago or ten hours ago ten years ago you would be able to proceed differently than you did if you, if you now that is platonic. It doesn't really exist. We can't get in a time machine and go back knowing what's happened in the intervening time. So that's taking us out of the reality we exist in, out of uh, objective fact, and saying if we were in a platonic floating universe where things were bizarre and not connected to reality, then would free will still hold true? Think about that. Checkmate free will, people. What if I make up a totally bizarre La La Land scenario? Then would free will hold true in your La La Land scenario? Look, if you took me in a time machine back 10 hours or 10 months or 10 years, uh, would I then act differently? Well, it depends. Do I get to know everything I know in between? No, you just I, you just rewind the tape to where I was? Well, then it seems like I would act the way I did act based on the fact that that's how I acted. So, wh why is that evidence that there's no free will? The fact that I chose a certain series of choices and that I would very possibly choose that series of choices again. Why does that mean that I have no free will? All right. But, let us give him his thought. A, you could have chosen B. If you became a, a firefighter, you, you could have become a policeman. 
you had chocolate ice cream, you could have chosen vanilla. It, it certainly seems to most of us, most of the time, that this is the universe we're living in. The, the, the second assumption is that each of us is the conscious author of our thoughts and actions. So that I could have started reading this David Hume's dialogue concerning natural religion. Uh, in fact, I did start reading it. I could have started reading it with this pen right here that I have right here and start outlining them. David Hume's dialogue concerning natural religion. But instead, instead I thought I'm going to do that video on Sam Harris and free will that I've been thinking about. Why start the material for a new video when I still haven't refuted Sam Harris in a, in a good, solid way? So I thought, all right, let's go find a video of Sam Harris on free will. And so that's what I did. So I faced a choice, and I actually thought about it for minutes. It, it wasn't just a flash. It was for minutes. It was actually all, all morning, probably, I, my mind was on it. Which, which one should I start putting my effort on? What should I do? You know, for maybe 30 or 45 minutes altogether, it was in my mind before I came and started. I made that decision. It wasn't a flash of a decision. It took quite a while for me to go over all those considerations. It's possible if I can't went back in a time machine that all those considerations would make sense to me the same way again. And I would again come to the same conclusion that I need to get this video out of the way before I start doing other videos or spend an afternoon working on the other videos. So, uh, I think I'm making my case clearly that we have free will and that you can't cast doubt on it by putting us in a hypothetical time machine. That wouldn't tell us a lot and it certainly wouldn't pr prove free will even if you took us back and we went and made those same decisions. It may be the case that we made those decisions because that's what seemed reasonable to us according to our circumstance. Even that wouldn't disprove free will, okay? The part of you that thinks and perceives and experiences your life in the present moment is the actually the author of your thoughts and choices and subsequent behavior. Now, the problem, unfortunately, is that we know that both of these assumptions are false. All right, well, both of these assumptions are true, aren't they? Uh, I am the author of my thoughts. That's why I chose to do that instead of this. Now, somebody else would have thought, well, Sam Harris isn't a real thinker. I'll go with David Hume, and I'll get to Sam Harris someday if I can. Sam Harris isn't an actual historical philosopher, right? Somebody else could have viewed it different. I am the author of my thoughts in that sense. Now, he's thinking of, who knows, some sort of uh, MRI scan they do of you, where the scientists know what choice you're going to make and you're supposed to hit the button or blurt it out when you've decided what choice you're going to make and they see the electrical circuits have completed before you blurt it out therefore what you know you know that I that doesn't still doesn't disprove to me that I wasn't in control of the impulse that created the electrical circuits it still doesn't disprove uh, free will. Now, free will is an event in the universe, and Sam Harris is never, never, never going to be able to get his head around it. He wants free will to be a cause-effect thing. He wants something to cause the free will. He wants to be able to see an operation somewhere. Now, the fact that the operation occurs right before his eyes, um, he dismisses, doesn't he? That's not sufficient to him. He can even practice free will himself, and that is not sufficient. He wants to see a platonic cause. He wants to see an Archimedean lever coming from without the universe, reaching into our universe, operating the free will. Or he wants the free will to be an Archimedean lever coming from outside the universe, right? Not affected by the anatomy of the brain or how the brain works or the chemicals or your past history or any of your previous knowledge, or any, any of the sensory data coming in from around you. He wants all that to be shut out, and your free will does the operation on its own in a solid, logical way. See? 
I think it's nonsense. Nonsense on stilts, Mr. Harris. Uh, the first problem is that we live in a world of cause and effect, and... Do we? What happens when you drop a bowling ball? It falls. What happens when you drop a bowling ball on your neighbor's head? Well, it depends on what my neighbor decides to do. Bingo! You've discovered free will. We live in a world of cause and effect, of physical inanimate objects, and free will of the human beings around us. And then there are these things called animals that uh, rely on percepts, and they're so dumb, the instincts that they have and the perceptions that they rely on are so limited in knowledge that we can like uh, we make a sport out of hunting them. The Native Americans used to run large numbers of animals over cliffs, and they would just stampede over cliffs and die in large numbers because they're so stupid, and they work on some sort of automated facsimile of knowledge that we call instincts. So they are at a low level, but um, humans have free will. So he says we live in a cause and effect universe. So he can't get past the mind-blowing epiphany of Isaac Newton. That this world out here is a world of cause and effect. It is not fuzzy, and it is not approximate. It is solid like clockwork. He says, mind blown, can't think for myself anymore. Well, guess what? There's a world of cause and effect of inanimate objects. And then there's a world of cause and effect based on free will. Free will is a category of cause. Sam Harris, do you read me? Free will is a category of causation. There's the metaphysically given, and there's the man-made. There are things which just are in the universe, and there are things which would not have been were it not for humans choosing to do them, or create them, or whatever it is. Okay, so, do we live in a universe just of cause and effect? Hopefully he's going to say, plus there's this thing called human action or free will or something. And he's going to make some room for us. Either our wills are determined by a long chain of prior causes, and we're not responsible for them, or they're determined by some random influences, and we're not responsible for them. And no matter how you, you turn this dial between the iron law of determinism he didn't leave in. He didn't put in there that uh, that they're not just a, a mess of influences. So, so right off the bat, I'm thinking to myself, an objectivist shapes their subconscious over time by thinking consciously about how they react to the stimuli coming in, how they react to other people, how they react to ideas, how they react to events. And they choose over time how to shape their values and their view of reality. And it seems like he's just said that that isn't an option to me, I think. Let's rewind and see exactly what that sentence was again. So he says that you cannot decide for yourself what you think of reality. Because I think that you decide for yourself what you think of reality as time goes on. And I used to think the 1800s were boring, but now I think it was a very exciting time in human history. I thought it was boring because I heard about so much in church as a kid. The pioneers, the pioneers, the pioneers, religious freedom. Woo! And, I, and then I learned, no, the 1800s is all about capitalism and, and railroads. So I have shaped my own understanding over time of the 1800s. Uh, now I believe it's a very exciting period. Um... If I were just a receptacle for, for the things coming at me, then I would have stayed with my previous view, uh, and I wouldn't have gone out and sought and read 29 books on capitalism in the history of the 1800s, and I wouldn't have refined and changed my view for myself. Okay, so I do definitely refine and change my view of the world consciously over time based on my values. Okay, I, I said, it doesn't make sense that the 1800s would be such a bad period. It must be vibrant and interesting, especially if the objectivists are always talking about it. So I went and sought evidence for that. And in seeking the evidence, I found 
an amazing, vibrant culture in the 1800s that was far surpassed the, the humdrum nonsense of the pioneers and religious freedom. Uh, so, I'm correct there, thoroughly correct. So let's see again what he says. Prior causes, and we're not responsible for them, or they're determined by some random influences, and we're not responsible for them. A long chain of prior causes. But the first problem is that we live in a world of cause and effect, and either our wills are determined by a long chain of prior causes, and we're not responsible for them, or they're determined by some random influences, and we're not responsible for them. So either it's a long chain of causation going back, or it resets every minute and it's just random. But either way, we're not responsible for what comes into us. Uh, the stimuli shape us. There's no mind in here. There's no mind in here. There's no free will. We are just a reactive machine. Because it's cause and effect. You see? He has no room for the mind. And no matter how you, you turn this dial between the iron law of determinism and randomness, this notion of free will doesn't make any more sense. Well, you have locked the notion of free will out of the scenario by saying that there is no free will. Everything is cause and effect. Now, find me free will. Sam, I used to think that you were pretty smart, but this is a really lame move. And you spend a lot of time on this, dude. You spend a lot of time on this free will nonsense, so I'm starting to wonder, you know. Also, I think for objectivists and those in the audience listening to this, think about the fact that this shows how basic philosophy can <clears throat> really have a detrimental effect on your ability to deal with ideas. I mean, because of his basic philosophy that there is not a mind, uh, he just cannot get his head around what free will is. Um, his basic Kantian idea that uh, what we think of as reality is just a tissue of fabrication, you know, it's just a bunch of categories, um, and there isn't a real access to reality. We all just have to agree with a group what we mean by reality. Sam totally buys into that, and you can see how it poisons his ability to think about this question. Sam, can you rise above this? I mean, to say that there are these two options only is to ignore the fact that the human mind exists. You know? He just doesn't have room for the human mind in his philosophy. And randomness, this notion of free will doesn't make any more sense. There's, there's, no, there's no way of combining chance and determinism that makes sense of free will. And, and consciousness clearly is not in the driver's seat. For instance, there's now a tradition of doing experiments where you give people a very simple choice, just to, to push one button, the left button, or the right button. And they can, do, they can, they can push whichever they want, whenever they want. So it's, so, uh, and the only other task you give them is to watch a special clock where they can discriminate time very, in a very fine-grained way. And they just have to notice what time it was when they finally consciously made up their mind. What you find, and what, what the, the first person who did this, Benjamin Levet did, a physiologist who, who had people hooked up to EEG while doing this, but has since been replicated with functional magnetic resonance imaging and even direct recordings from the, from the cortices of, of surgical patients, you find that the time at which a person consciously decides thinks they have consciously decided to, to push the left button versus the right, comes some seconds often, uh, at minimum half a second, sometimes up to five seconds or seven seconds after the brain has already decided. You can tell what the person is going to do before they know what they're going to do by looking at the, the brain data. Now, I but you weren't in control of any of that stuff going on in your brain, so that's not you making the decision. See? See how flimsy it is? Because stuff was going on in your brain before you said, aha, I've made my decision. 
Therefore, you were not in control of the decision? Sam, does that follow, really? Really? Now, if you assume free will exists and you realize, I mean, you just look at the evidence that human beings walk around and choose what to do, drop a bowling ball on your neighbor's head and see how he reacts. You don't know how he's going to react. Duh, because he has free will. Now, if you just realize there's free will, then when you look at an MRI scan and you see a person's brain looking and thinking and they seem to have decided, but they don't say they've decided. They say they decided then. And you look at the MRI and you say, actually, they decided before that and they didn't know. On what grounds would they say that, Sam? On what grounds would you define it that way? When they say, I decided at this point, you should take a picture of that and see if you can find anything in there. because, And you're not going to be able to. That is just the point at which free will was exercised. Which blows his mind, because there was no cause. And there has to be a cause. So this gap is, is, is fundamentally hostile to the notion of free will, because this means that someone could tell what you're going to do at a point in time where you think you're still making up your mind. But, and people have been wrestling with these data. For someone could tell what you're going to do. No, the, the MRI guy didn't know what that brain state meant until they told him what that brain state meant. And if at the end of that brain state they would have said this instead of that, then they would have said, aha, the brain state that was in effect before the person said they made the decision, uh, it doesn't follow, Sam. This is flimsy, flimsy material. Uh, but he cannot get out of it. He can't see his way around it. Because in order to see his way around it, he has to say that free will is a form of cause. Free will can cause things to happen. Like you dropping a bowling ball on your neighbor. It was free will that caused that. And him getting his gun and shooting you, or maybe getting his vehicle and running you over, or maybe burning your house down, or maybe calling the police. He has lots of options. Uh, he is not like another bowling ball that's just going to bounce or something. It is not just cause and effect. Free will is involved. And inside that free will, a mass is, is there, the human brain, that considers past and potential future and beliefs and feelings and those around you and whether or not you'd screw up the lives of others if you retaliated in this way or will you screw up the lives of the others if you don't retaliate. All those things come into effect and he cannot get the very first instant of that, where I decide by myself free will to go over and drop a bowling ball on his head. He just, Sam Harris can't even get started in this thought experiment because he cannot find a cause for why you would go drop the bowling ball to begin with. He can't even get started. You get over there and drop the bowling ball and then your neighbor reacts possibly in this way, possibly in that way, and it's no longer a cause and effect universe, Sam. We are now dealing with free will. And he says, oh, but what if it is a cause effect? What if it actually is? What if, what if it, the illusion is a free will? Or what if free will is a delusion? And what if it's actually cause and effect? You provide no evidence for that. There is no evidence that it is cause and effect. There's all the evidence in the world that my, my neighbor has his free will to choose how to react to me. We have all the evidence in the world for that. We have no evidence at all that it is simply a, a, a cause and effect like billiard balls. If it were cause and effect like billiard balls, we would be able to talk about the cause and effect nature of the situation, which we clearly can't. We are confounded constantly by free will. We have no idea where society is going tomorrow. We have a pretty good idea where the universe is going tomorrow. We know where stars are going to be and how big stars are going to be and where comets are going to go. And, but we don't know what humans are going to decide to do tomorrow. We don't know what person named Jordan Peterson is going to come out of the blue. And just yesterday he was a little college professor who had uh, a, a thousand students. And then a year later he's doing speeches in Australia and Bulgaria and Romania. We don't know who's going to choose to do what because this is a universe of free will, Sam. The individuals in this universe have free will. The backdrop is the universe of cause and effect. And there are things called individuals that have free will. And Sam, pfft, 
blows his hippie noodle, cannot get his head around that fact, rejects it philosophically from the beginning, and therefore he cannot deal with these questions in a reasonable way. Here is trying to collapse this interval, and some imagine that they have. I'm not persuaded by any of those results, but the truth is, even if you collapsed it totally, and the moment your brain decides was in fact the moment that you were consciously aware of deciding, there still wouldn't be room for free will. You still wouldn't know why it is you picked left over right. And you because you can't say why, see, he has to have a cause. Free will is the cause, Sam. He says you still can't say why you chose that. You're just going to say you chose it. And yet there has to be a cause, doesn't there, Sam? Well, if this cause is just the fact that I happen to be in my brain at the time, why can't we just say the cause is two things, the state of my brain at the time and free will? You cannot get rid of free will, Sam. You're trying and trying and trying, and you keep telling us there's no room for it, you can't find it, you can't see it, and yet you're not getting rid of it. Our neighbor is still going to act in an unpredictable manner. Okay? And he says, even the randomness doesn't account for it. Still could be, it could be cause and effect. No, it's free will. You have no evidence that it's cause and effect. What would be the operation of cause and effect? Little teeny chemical interactions, billions of them inside your brain. That is just beyond complicated. Your theory cannot hold that, Sam. Nobody's theory can hold that. To, to, to have billions and trillions of complicated interactions every second to be your cause and effect chain? The complexity of the human brain over time is your cause and effect chain? Give me a break. Either you get room for free will or you're just never going, you're just going to be flabbergasted by these things called humans. You'll never be able to get what these humans are doing. Now, once you accept there's free will, you can stop wasting your time on these stupid thought experiments that prove nothing and get on to thinking about something uh, substantive. You keep trying and trying and you can't get rid of free will. There's still that goddamn instant where they, they're not choosing randomly, they're not being caused to choose. What the fuck is it that they're doing, Sam? It's not random, is it? It's not cause and effect. You can't prove that it's cause and effect. You don't even have a hypothesis of how that would work. There are billions and trillions of neurons in, in your mind. Being a chain of cause and effect for, for your very simple thing where I pick up a bowling ball? That's extravagant. An extravagant theory with far too much packed into it, Sam. Okay. Am I making my case here? Because I had a citizen who said that I wasn't making the case strong enough against Sam and his free will determinism thing. I think I'm making a strong case here. Sam, can you answer it? I don't think he can because he would have to accept the philosophical fact that we have free will. And he's not going to do that. It's just a <clears throat> philosophically obvious to our introspection fact that we can choose what to do. It's obvious to introspection. I'm going to pick up this phone. You know what? In the back of my mind, the whole time I said that, I was thinking, now I'm going to pick up that plastic thing over there. I said, they don't know what that plastic... At the last instant, I thought, well, that's stupid. They don't know what that plastic thing is. What am I going to call it? So I just said the phone. See? <clears throat> I didn't even know I was going to try to come up with that argument two minutes ago because I didn't know where I was going to be in my chain of thoughts at this instant. Sam, you cannot do a cause and effect that complicated and involving that much stuff. There has to be some other thing involved. We can't even do it with animals. We have to admit that they have this automated knowledge called instinct. So to do it with humans and to wipe out the thing called human free will with mere causation is a Huge, cumbersome hypothesis, Sam. Huge. You should be able to appreciate the fact... Oh, uh, I should rely more on his intelligence. If he gets hold of this, he should be able to appreciate the line along which I'm going. So, uh, my video is getting close to... I can do 35 minutes or so at the most, and I think that my thoughts on it are as clear as they can get. Letting Sam Babylon more is not going to clarify his thoughts on the subject. 
So let's draw a line there, ladies and gentlemen. Sam Harris fails to understand that your neighbor will react in his own way to a bowling ball attack. And he fails to understand that because he will not accept free will as a constituent of the universe, which it clearly is. Sam, get over yourself. Step up to the plate. Start doing real philosophy.